Clemson defied the odds and came out victorious in their first round matchup against New Mexico, winning an emphatic mat- fashion. And now they're pitted against three seed Baylor coming off just a dominant performance against Colgate. So I am Riley Davis. He is Connor Hope. We are both of Heat Check CBB here to break down this matchup between two pretty high powered offenses. I'm going to turn to you, Connor, first. I know you said you were high on the Mountain West going into this tournament. Clemson had a ton of skepticism around them. I knocked them for losing to Boston College in a game where they essentially no showed uh, to a mediocre to bad ACC team. I, I did not expect them to come out swinging like they did against New Mexico, but what did you see from them in that first game? And how do you think that could help them get the win over Baylor? In that game, <clears throat> Clemson's offense has been stronger than its defense all year. Mm-hmm. They were going up against one of the most high powered backcourt offenses in the country in New Mexico to hold that team to 56 points. 56 was phenomenal and gives you hope as a Clemson fan against a much better offense, a much more consistent offense with a backcourt that's as good, if not better, even even without uh, Langston Love. Baylor's offense is really good. And so when you're looking at this at this matchup, um, two top 25 offenses, two defenses that sit outside the top 45, uh, points are going to be scored. Maybe not 102 to 100, uh, but points are going to be scored. And this has a lot of individual matchups that also intrigue me. I think it is, it might not be one of the best uh, because I do think that Baylor on paper is clearly a better team than Clemson. Mm-hmm. But as far as those out, when you get past the UNC, Michigan States, the Gonzaga, uh, Kansas is the, I mean, even, even like the Duke James Madison's and stuff like that. Once you get Grand past Canyon, Alabama, before, Grand Canyon, Alabama, I think they're third on my intrigue rankings. Like once you get past those matchups, you, there's not a much more exciting matchup to watch than Clemson Baylor because you know, you're going to get points and you're going to get points in bunches. Yeah. That's where I'm at with you. I, I think Joe Girard has a chance to bounce back after a really slow first game where he only shot two of eight from three against Baylor's guards who aren't particularly good defensively. Um, I think Eve Misi, he's been playing really well down the stretch. I know he struggled at, at points this season, sort of went through a slump, but they can get buckets from him in the half court. I think he's uh, way more skilled than maybe people realize when you get him in the middle of the uh, get him in like in the middle third of the court. Um, so you're gonna have a decent front court battle between him and PJ Hall. Ian Shefflin had a legacy game against New Mexico as well, hit a bunch of threes and was just dominant on, on the glass and in the paint. Their guards and front court players in this game who can put up points, which should make for a, a huge entertainment value. Uh, Ray J Dennis is another one who has been just excellent down the stretch for Baylor and has been huge for them, even getting up to the three seed. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you that the the points are going to be the storyline here. I could see it getting into probably high seventies, low eighties would be my guess. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the defenses here because you mentioned what Clemson did against New Mexico, how they slowed down what has been a prolific offense all season, how they took two really good guards in Jalen House and Jamal Mashburn and left them completely discombobulated. Personally, I thought Clemson's length was able to bother those guards because you look at this team, they have obviously Hall on the interior and Ian Shefflin, who might not have like the length of an elite athlete, but he's a space eater. He's a, a, a wide, widely built young man. And but then you also have Chauncey Wiggins on the wing. You have Jack Clark on the wing. Both those guys are 6'10". RJ Godfrey comes off the bench. He's 6'8 and a, a unit, probably like 240 pounds. I like that Clemson can muck up a game because they have a ton of size, even if the numbers don't necessarily play out uh, when you look at their defensive efficiency. Yeah, I, I think what was most impressive in this game for me was it goes beyond the the shooting woes for New Mexico because we've seen those before. Like they're not a they're not a fantastic shooting team unless they mm-hmm. get hot. Um I think it was, you know, you can you can kind of see it, right? They they struggled from deep, and then you have PJ Hall down low, uh, and w- which kind of helps clear up a, a lot of those those layups that New Mexico has relied upon when they can't shoot the deep ball. I think what impressed me the most about this game is Clemson, 
who is not a team that forces a lot of turnovers against New Mexico, who is a team that takes excellent care of the ball, won the turnover battle 13 to nine. Uh, they had seven steals in this game. I haven't looked at the, at the score, but that has to be like top five or six for them all season mm-hmm. in terms of total number of steals. Uh, they just, they just absolutely made life miserable for a backcourt that yes, this is away from home. And maybe this just proves the New Mexico can't play on the road, uh, you know, comments that were made all season, but like Jalen house doesn't turn the ball over four times in a game that often. Uh, Jamal Mashburn doesn't shoot one of 11 in a game that often. So it was just absolutely, they came in, Brad Brownell had the absolute perfect game plan for this game. Uh, I, I treat Brownell similar to, I treat the way I treat Tad Boyle. Like I think you, you start to see like, Clemson's probably at their ceiling right now. Colorado's mm-hmm. probably at their ceiling right now in terms of like the where they can get. Um, it's not a it's not a coach's issue though, which is why Brownell continues to keep his job despite not being a consistent NCAA tournament team. Um, it's just what you run into uh, at those programs and the, what he's done with this roster, uh, bringing them back from where you know they looked near unstoppable early in the season. Clemson mm-hmm. did. Uh, they struggled, uh, at the beginning, at the start of ACC play started to turn it around. Then they had like the three losses in four games to Notre Dame, Wake Forest, Boston college, um, to then come back and put a beating on the number at the time, the number 22 team, uh, per the net in the country, um, it is just, it's just impressive. And, Mm -hmm. and I think it gives you hope as a Clemson fan that going into this game against Baylor, a team with a national championship winning coach, a team that plays in the toughest conference in the country, you can win. Yeah. And I'm going to build off that. You mentioned how much you liked Brownell's game plan against New Mexico. Do you think there's any chance they can slow down this Baylor offense? Because yeah, I'm going to let you speak first. Then I have some thoughts. I don't watch the bot middle to bottom of the ACC that often. So I'm going to, I'm going to pose a question to you. Let me hear it. Has PJ hall seen a big as big and athletic as Eve Missy all season. Mm. He's seen, he's seen, he's seen six, nine athletes. He's seen, he's seen some, a couple like he's seen, I think Grant Nelson in that Alabama game. Um, yeah, but I want to say Grant company? Nelson's Grant Nelson's like no, I'm talking about like he's seen <laughs> six nine athletes and he's seen bigs ah, like right, Grant Nelson. Right. But has mm-hmm. he seen a seven footer who can rim run the way that Missy can? Are you not impressed by Bai Nadongo? Are you not <laughs> impressed by Fetty Federico? Uh that's probably the, the closest archetype. The closest. Saw. <laughs> yeah. Is that really uh, it? Jeez. <laughs> what happened to the conference I love? Efton Reed, uh, Gonzaga legend. I wouldn't call Efton, Efton Reed that athletic, though. Yeah, he's just big. Um, he's 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 really skilled, which is why mm-hmm. Gonzaga went after him. Um, <laughs> I uh, Efton was good my this point. Year. My point here is is that I think Baylor can use Missy to run PJ Hall around a little bit more than mm-hmm. even uh, Nelly Junior Joseph could. Um, and and you need to respect it because he has the size and he has the pedigree to just collect offensive rebounds and put them back rim run and get oops like that's kind of what pj hall is going to be dealing with in this game and i'm not saying that pj hall is not the best center on the floor because i i still think he is the best center on the floor but if you can move him around like that and you can open up space for baylor's guards and you have a guy like your second best or third third best i'll say i'll i'll give i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say third best and your third best guard is joe gerard (laughs) or third best player i guess is joe gerard (laughs) Um, defensively, I, I just don't see it. Like, I think, I think what they could do in that game against New Mexico is keep PJ hall at home a little bit more Mm -hmm. and they've turned them over. Uh, Baylor turns the ball over a little bit more, but I don't think that's the, the game plan. I think the game plan here is you need to figure out a way to 
make Missy more stationary. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. I definitely see your point on that. I, on the other end, I think PJ Hall can get him into foul trouble. Um, however, I still lean Baylor and we'll get into our score predictions in a minute. And that's because, yes, we just saw Baylor muck up a game against New, or excuse me, we saw Clemson muck up the game against New Mexico and get some key stops, force them into mistakes. There's one player that we haven't even mentioned yet for Baylor, and I've intentionally been saving him for the end, and that's Jacoby Walter. He's mm-hmm. someone who I had my eye on. I wrote about him on the must-watch NBA draft prospects for Heat Check CBB and noted how after shooting, I think, 41% from three in the non-con, that number plummeted to 29% in conference play. Well, he came out first game of the tournament, shot three for eight from the field, or excuse me, three from eight from beyond the arc. He got to the free throw line. 10 times uh, he looked like a different player he looked like he's ready to to build on his stock and be that top pick that we thought he could be if he shows up locked in and plays up to his ceiling I don't care how much size that Clemson has on, on the wing how many bodies they can throw at him he's a bad matchup for them um, at his best he's not just a movement shooter who can fly off of screens he can get you his own offense on pull-up jumpers he can do a little bit with the ball in his hands and I think again I I just I, I sort of have a feeling this is going to be his moment where where he reminds everybody why he was once a projected top five pick. Before we yeah, go into and, and, oh. and I also think I mean it, the other player that we haven't mentioned is uh, Ray J. Dennis. Like he he is the conductor of this Baylor offense, mm-hmm. and like it, I think what's going to be interesting is is how. Clemson matches up their three guards uh, against Dennis, Walter, and Nunn. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't think I, you're going to have one of them defended by Joe Girard in this game. And who do you, none, prob, probably. Yeah. But, but at the same time, like, do you really want, Joe Girard to be keyed on a 45% three point shooter who can run off screens and, and catch and shoot. Like, (laughs) do you, do you want, you don't want him on, you don't want him on Dennis. You, you put, you put Hunter on Dennis and you just, you just let him sit there. But then (laughs) it's like your choices are, are none who shoots the ball incredibly well or Jacoby Walter, who has the highest, highest ceiling of any player in this game Mm -hmm. from a talent perspective. Um, it's none. The answer is none. Uh, and that's why I think Jaden Nunn has a huge game offensively, but that's that's okay. Okay. I don't hate that. I don't hate that prediction. He has gotten hot before. I'm just staking my, staking my, excuse me, hitching my wagon to Jacoby Walter. Uh, Before we get into our score predictions, I'm going to give a mention to the sponsor of the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, who's uh, sponsored us for all of these videos covering every major conference tournament game last week, covering every single NCAA tournament game this week. It's my bookie. So if you're on a hunt for a sports book to call home, you can bet the nonstop action of March Madness with my bookie. They have a huge selection of straight bets, props, and odds boosts, whatever your style. My bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. Of course, if you've been tuning into our videos, you've heard about the welcome bonus, the, the first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. All you have to do is use promo code SLEEPERS. Promo code SLEEPERS, it's in the title. You've heard us say it. Big shout out to them for allowing us to do this content all week um, and keep the lights on, as Greg likes to say. So I'm going to turn to you, Connor, first. What would you? What's your score prediction for this game? Um, so... Look, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the the Ken Palm score prediction first. He has it as 75 73. That feels a bit. I don't even want to say it's low because they both play slow. It still feels a bit low. Um, I they're gonna it's gonna be lower because uh, neither of these teams like to push the pace. But I'm gonna say Baylor hits the 80 mark. So I'm going to say it's going to be 81, 75, 76 uh, Baylor over Clemson. Um, and the only the only thing I think that could, could push it a little bit closer is the turnovers. And if Clemson continues to pursue turnovers, mm-hmm. uh, it could give Baylor some issues. But they're an excellent free throw shooting team. So you're not going to see a lot of this, you know, at the end of games, at the end of the game, if it's a six-point game and Clemson is fouling, 
I think Baylor's going to continue to to hold them off uh, with a little bit of a stiff arm from the free throw line. So yeah, 81, 76 Baylor. I'm going to go with 80 to 70 and uh, in favor of Baylor. I think it's a game that's back and forth throughout really probably the first, say 33 to 35 minutes. Baylor goes it pulls ahead late with like a six or seven point lead. Clemson starts fouling. They're able to ice the game at the line. Whatever happens though, Connor Hope and I will be back on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, breaking it down. Make sure you like, subscribe, stay tuned for the coverage all the way through the national championship game.